If you're in the market for a great value sports car, the C6 Corvette in all variants is one of the very best options out there, with astounding power, reliability, and iconic styling that is instantaneously recognizable. Between the base model, Grand Sport, Z06, and ZR1, there are incredible options at any budget. I personally have had the wonderful privilege of driving and owning or reviewing all four of these C6 Corvette trims, and want to share the details and comparisons of each, having driven them all to help you decide which trim is right for you. We'll cover all the major areas about the C6 and what you need to know about each of the cars, so let's get to it. I want to kick things off with the price of each car, so that you have an idea moving forward which C6 Corvettes you're comparing and deciding between based on your budget. Assuming less than 60,000 miles and a clean title on each, here's some rough numbers that may vary with both location and over time. A base C6 can be found for between 19 to 24,000 with an LS2, or between 24 to 32,000 with an LS3. The Grand Sport tends to run around the mid 30s. Early Z06 models are between 33 to 42,000, with the later models bringing in as high as the mid 50s for mint low mileage examples. The ZR1 can be had around 80 to 85,000 if the seller is at all in touch with reality, but you'll find that many sellers decide to list it for 40 grand more than that for literally no reason. And if you're ready to spend over 100 grand, as great as the C6 ZR1 is, there's probably some better options at that price. Getting into the acceleration figures and engines behind each C6, here's a graphic showing all of the main information that you could find on Google. So instead of wasting your time reading that off, I'm instead going to run you through the most important things that can't be found on a spec sheet. For the base model, deciding between the LS2 and the LS3 is really your big call. Having driven both, the power and performance difference is almost completely negligible. Although the LS3 is considered one of GM's most reliable engines ever. The LS2 is more prone to needing a harmonic balancer replacement, and my 2005 Corvette needed one at 35,000 miles. It also did consume a fair bit of oil in the time that I owned it, but most LS engines will. The LS3 is definitely the better engine, but the LS2 is still really good, and I personally felt that the improvement wasn't worth spending an extra $5,000 on for an LS3 model, but you'll have to decide whether it's worth it for yourself. As for the Grand Sport, the main takeaway here is that it has the exact same engine being the LS3 as the later base models, so you'll spend some more money but get the exact same power and acceleration, but we'll get to what is different about that car later on. All of the LS2 and LS3 cars do feel fast, but aren't anything that pins you to your seat. Under the hood of the Z06 is the glorious sounding 7 liter LS7. My impression while driving the Z06 was that this was the perfect amount of power for the C6 generation. It's as fast as the car can get without having undesired wheel spin, under acceleration, or any sketchiness in the rear end. The car is still relatively easy to control, but a massive step forward from the lower trims in this department. The 7000 RPM Redline also makes the Z06 the most engaging to drive at the limit in my opinion. Only note here is to beware of the LS7 valve guide issue. It's a somewhat common problem that can grenade the engine if it occurs. That said, there are aftermarket solutions that eliminate this issue for under a grand, so just expect to factor that cost in. Or, my personal suggestion is to simply buy a car that's already had the fix done, which is actually much easier to find than you would expect. The ZR1 is on another planet here, not only supercharged, but given super tall gearing that allows it to do over 200 miles per hour. While it is inexplicably awesome behind the wheel, my food for thought is as follows. It took me a frustrating amount of restraint to drive this car on the street in a safe and legal way. With the tall gearing and immense power, by the time you top out second gear, you're already doing jail speeds. In this way, I preferred the Z06 for being able to row through the gears and sensibly push the car more without seriously endangering yourself or others. Regardless, the ZR1 is still absolutely unbelievable on this front. As for the transmission options within the C6, they really are only related to both model year and automatic or manual, rather than the trim level of the car. I'll start out with the automatics and then get to the manuals. 
For only the 2005 model year, the automatic is a 4-speed and it feels very odd. It's a transmission mainly used in trucks and it does kind of shift like one. The shifts are a little bit slow and sluggish and just doesn't really feel well matched to the car. Also being only a 4-speed, the acceleration is slightly hindered and highway RPMs sit higher than any other option. For every other year being 2006 to 2013, they used GM's own 6L80 transmission. The newer 6L80s from 2014 and up have horrible reliability in vehicles like the Silverado, where the torque converters regularly destroy the entire transmission before 100,000 miles. However, the earlier ones in the C6 are actually rather stout though, and face way less stress than those found in GM's trucks. The Z06 and ZR1 cannot be had with an automatic, and rightfully so. In this era, GM's transmissions may not have been the sharpest, but a company known as Tremec was one of the best in the business. All manual transmissions in any C6 are from Tremec, a T56 for 2005 to 2007, and the legendary TR6060 from 2008 onwards. Not a ton to say here, both of the Tremec options are great. Each of them are sharp with an engaging feel and are able to accept way more power than stock if that's a consideration for you. The main takeaway here is that the manual options are certainly superior, but if you do get an automatic, the 4-speed is probably best avoided. Separation between trims is quite evident when considering suspension and overall driving dynamics. The lower level C6s have a steel chassis with either a Targa or a convertible top, while the Z06 and ZR1 are fixed roofs with an aluminum frame, making the Z06 lighter than the rest and providing slightly more rigidity. Every C6 uses a double wishbone suspension paired with leaf springs. In the base models, the leaf spring's lower spring constant does make the suspension feel quite lazy. Each base model has an ultra comfortable ride quality from this, but the front end feels large and there's a significant waiting period for the weight transfer to settle on turn-in. The standard suspension is still great for most cases, but lacks the additional feel and responsiveness of the higher trims. This is the area where the Grand Sport earns its higher price tag with larger sway bars, stiffer leaf springs, and a higher damping coefficient in the shocks. It also comes with wider tires and a dry sump oiling system that is meant to prevent starvation with the enhanced grip. Driving the Grand Sport, the car hit its size and its weight far more. In a corner, the Grand Sport stays much flatter and gives you significantly more confidence to roll the speed through a turn. I think this makes the Grand Sport a good option if you are planning on track use and want some of the useful upgrades over the base model without having to upgrade and modify things yourself. Within the C6 generation, the Z06 is a slam dunk on the handling front. In my opinion, it felt like the most planted of all four trims, with even stiffer suspension and a small bit more downforce thanks to a factory splitter. Being 200 pounds lighter than every other trim is also a major factor. The Z06 feels truly dialed, giving the impression that it has capability beyond most drivers' limits. It ran a 722 at the Nürburgring, only 3 seconds behind the ZR1, which definitely gained those 3 seconds on the back straightaway that's over a mile and a half long, essentially meaning that the Z06 was the fastest C6 through the corners. Pair that with a more manageable 505 horsepower, and the Z06 is certainly the easiest to extract the fastest lap times out of. Now for the ZR1. I mentioned during my review that it felt slightly floatier than the Z06. The handling is almost as good, and the suspension is nearly identical, so this discrepancy is a byproduct of the ZR1 weighing about 300 pounds more. The obscene power from the LS9 makes the rear end quite loose at times, and because of this, the ZR1 can get away from you very quickly. If you want to take a deeper look at what I mean, check out the ZR1's official onboard Nürburgring lap and watch how much the driver has to correct the rear end on corner exits. Also included with the ZR1 is magnetic ride control. For the next time you wrench on your engine or car, I want to quickly show you something that will save you a ton of time and effort. You can access the exact full repair and maintenance manual that dealerships use to get step-by-step -step pictured instructions on how to do anything you can think of. Just take a look at how detailed these instructions are, with images and diagrams that make things crystal clear. 
one of these shop manuals will enable you to have everything you could ever need all in one place and delivered in a format that's easy to understand, making you ready to tackle any job. Check out eManual online, where a quick search will turn up a manual for any year of any vehicle. Grabbing one of these inexpensive manuals will save you potentially thousands of dollars in return simply by keeping you out of the dealership. It's also a great way to learn more about vehicles in general while helping you avoid problems along the way. Right now, you can get 22% off any manual on the entire website using my discount code REDLINE22, which is linked along with their website in the description. I really think this is an amazing resource for the price. Grab yourself one now and thank yourself later. I'll make the brakes a quick one as they really are quite good on every C6. In the base model, they are plenty sufficient even for track use. Now, this is another area in which the Grand Sport separates itself actually being equipped with the Z06 brakes. Included with this are six piston front calipers over the base model's four, along with some functional brake ducting to help reduce both wear and fade. This same setup on the Z06 shaves speed very quickly thanks to the reduced body weight and leaves very little to be desired. Lastly, the ZR1 has the most stopping power by a fair margin, equipped with carbon ceramics that can shed a massive amount of heat. With how quick the ZR1 builds speed though, this was simply a necessity. The final topic that I'll cover before providing a conclusion on where I think each trim might be best is the interior and exterior. I'll cut right to it, the interior is essentially the same for all C6s. The Z06 and the ZR1 get some special badging, carbon fiber trim, and slightly more bolstered seats, but that's really about it. On the outside, the Grand Sport and Z06 look quite similar, with the wider fenders and additional vents. The ZR1 looks the wildest, with carbon arrow, a carbon fiber roof, massive fender vents, and a glass panel to see that beautiful LS9 engine. Also, Jetstream Blue is just one of the best colors ever made, and it can actually be found on other trims, although very rare. All of the cars from the outside look relatively similar to one another and are all a great design. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them in this department. So wrapping things up with some final things to think about regarding each C6 Corvette. The base model with an LS2 is a phenomenal value. You can spend just 20 grand and have yourself a beautiful, manual, rear-wheel drive V8 coupe, the ultimate bargain. This trim was what allowed me to own a Corvette at a very young age, after working countless hours towards that goal, and will always be special to me in that way, as it's the quickest path to experiencing the classic that is the C6. The LS3 base model is best if you want something daily drivable and the most reliable that doesn't break the bank, and is more than adequate in every way for regular street use. These cars stand up to abuse with a smile, and it leaves one on your face as well. If you want something a little more aggressive looking, with upgrades everywhere but under the hood, the Grand Sport might be for you. This is a great choice if you intend on some weekend track use with many of the desired and normally aftermarket upgrades already done for you. Although it must be said with the current market prices, if you're willing to buy a Grand Sport, it might be best to just spend very little more and get yourself a Z06. To me personally, the Z06 is the overall best value iteration of the C6 being the most well-rounded and crushing the competition in all facets of sports car greatness. Daily driving, extreme track use, with lightning quick lap times, or a combination of both are all on the table here. Just be sure to upgrade the valve train or buy one that already has to save yourself from the LS7's biggest pitfall. On the other hand, that LS7 makes a sound that embodies what an American V8 should be, and being paired with the Tremec TR6060 creates an unforgettable sense of unity with the car. The Beast in the Shadows, the C6 ZR1, is best described as special. It's the kind of car that would draw my 10-year-old self to this obsession in the first place. Every so often, a car is produced that just leaves a different and historic impression, becoming a legend. The ZR1 is that car, the first Corvette the top 200 miles per hour, and something that just feels like it shouldn't be legal from behind the wheel. But that unhinged and violent nature of the ZR1 is exactly why it's so special. If you plan to hold on to a C6 for a long time and can swing the price tag, the ZR1 will not disappoint and is the apex predator of the roads, a car that makes its mark on both asphalt and automotive history. 
In the end, you really cannot go wrong with a C6 Corvette. It's the generation I believe to be the most synchronous with the brand of Corvette and what I think of every time I hear it. If you want to see any of the trims in greater depth, you can find my reviews of each linked in the description or on my channel. I wish you the very best in your search and purchase of one of these incredible cars, and hope this video has been helpful in learning which is best suited to you. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.